Hello, I'm going to be doing a code review of how I automate the order fulfillment process of my eBay store. There's actually various aspects of my store that I automate, such as bookkeeping of expenses when I make purchases for my supplier, or automatically adjusting the handling times of my listings based on the current time because I have designated days that I make shipments, and things like being able to calculate how many items fit into a particular box. Uh, I made a separate program for that, but I actually call into that code in this particular order fulfillment code, which I'll be getting into later. But the point of this video is A, so I don't forget how this works because I'm just doing this as a way to make a little bit of money on the side, but eventually I'm probably not going to be doing this anymore. And also, I'd like to get some feedback on my code if anyone has suggestions about how this could be improved, even though at this point I'm pretty happy with how it works, but maybe someone has some ideas they can offer. Uh, that can make this even better. And also, I'm making this video to possibly inspire people or give people ideas. This is a private project, and I will not have this code on a public repo, but this particular code is generic enough, uh, so I would be willing to demonstrate it. So the first thing that we do is authenticate with Google's API because after we handle an order, then I want the order information to be stored on Google Sheets for bookkeeping. And after that, then we go into this evaluate orders method. And the first thing we do is get a list of our completed orders. And eBay API is a wrapper that I wrote for calling into the eBay API, as you can see here. I found eBay's API to be pretty difficult to work with. There was not much documentation. They had official documentation, but in some ways it wasn't very clear. And there just weren't many examples available online. So unfortunately, this took a lot of trial and error and writing integration tests to make sure I am calling these APIs properly and getting the data I need out of them. So in this particular case, we're looking for completed orders. So this method get orders by set uh, status is looking for completed. And as you can see, we're basically just getting a list of orders here. Uh, with these parameters. Uh, so the reason why I'm setting numbers of number of days to 10 is because I don't remember what the default value is, but uh, if there's no point in me looking at orders that are more than 10 years old because it doesn't take me 10 days to ship an item. And if I'm just looking for completed orders, then I should just look for a maximum of 10 days. Really, this could even be lower, but it's just a way for me to reduce redundant data. So anyway, that's the eBay API wrapper. And so we get the completed orders and then for all the completed orders, we figure out which ones have not been shipped. And out of that, we do a for loop on the unshipped orders. And as you can see, this is 
big for loop. But we check if the order has been paid for yet. And if not, then we skip. If the order has been paid for, then I do check to make sure that uh, if the order is too new, then uh, there may be incomplete data. So I ran into a problem with this before. And so this is just to make sure that uh, I really do want to go through with handling an order that is too new and there may possibly be missing data. And as you can see from this comment, uh, sometimes the pay time will show up as negative if the payment hasn't actually been processed yet, which is another sort of annoying thing. So this is just a way for me to handle that situation. Here's another edge case. If the total value of an order is 750, then your shipment will need to require a signature confirmation. And technically, I could automate this as well, but for such a big order, I feel comfortable just handling it, it manually. Uh, and after I handle that order and get it shipped, then uh, when this function gets called again, then that order is going to be skipped because it will be shipped, so it won't be in the unshipped orders list. I also have order IDs that I may not want to automate. And here we are making sure that the uh, my printer is available. So I have a thermal printer that I send the print jobs to. And so this is a printing class that I made. And yeah, I'm using Win32 print and making sure that the printer is not in a uh, error state or a pause state. So after we confirm the printer is available, on this particular case, I believe this is for if someone purchases through the global shipping program. Yes, this is actually what it's for. And so this was another thing that wasn't very clear to me. And I had to research this, like, what does this even mean? But yes, orders that are made through the global shipping program have a ref ID that you need to add on to your shipping label. So this is where I handle that. So in this particular case, uh, we read the shipping address and uh, the buyer information from the order data. And so I created an address class. And this is just a container for the information, like the name, address, and so forth. Everything you can see here. And so there can be a from address and a to address for a shipment. And the reason why they are handled differently, okay, they aren't handled differently at all. It's just uh, we do have a member variable to store whether an address is a from or to address, but they're not actually internally handled differently.
So the first thing we need to do is validate the address, which just means make sure that the address is a real location. So for address validation and ordering shipping labels, I'm using a service called Ship Engine. So I made a wrapper for the Ship Engine API. And so I'm just reading the API keys from a config file. I understand that this is not secure, but for now, that's what I'm doing. So validate address. Uh, here's an example of how I call into the ship engine API. So we define the headers with the API key. And we use requests to make a post API request with the headers to this URL, and then we get the data we need out of here. And then we populate an address class that I mentioned earlier. In the case that their address is not valid, then that's something that I just need to uh, manually deal with. Or if their address isn't valid, then I just ask the, ask the buyer to check their address. Another thing that I do here is at this particular point, there are times when Ship Engine will say that an address is invalid, and it turns out that the address actually is valid. It's just that it's written in a strange way. And so I end up making the order for the shipping label directly through eBay. And I need to know the dimensions and the type of package to make that label for. So this is calling into my code to uh, get the dimensions for the package, uh, I mean, for the contents to uh, ship. And then from there, I can determine what type of package to use. But I actually have automated determining what type of package to use given certain items and their dimensions, which I will show later down here because we're actually going to get into that pretty soon. So after we validate an address, This is just another check to make sure that the order has not actually been shipped yet. So we get the quantity of the order. And transaction info is where I locally store in JSON as well as uh, some other information, but uh, I store the information about the order. Uh, for every order that I get and handle through the script, I store locally in transaction info folder, as well as sending this data to Google Sheets. The buyer might have a checkout message, which is when you make a purchase, you can leave an additional memo, something like make sure to do, make sure to, uh, make sure my item doesn't have scratches or something like that. Usually people don't use this, so, but, uh, this is important to keep track of. So that's why I put in the variable, which we'll be storing later. And, 
I'm not going to go into details of how uh, of what's going on here. That's something I'm not willing to disclose. But uh, we received some information from the listing that we ultimately end up populating a contents info dictionary from. And so from here, we can get the dimensions of the items in the cell. We can get the weight of the bubble wrap that includes the, uh, each of the items. This is the cumulative weight of the bubble wrap, of the weight of the, of the contents, and the surface area, which actually, is this even used? Okay, it is used. So, the first thing we need to do is get a quote for the sale. And to do that, we can assume that we're going to use the heaviest package out of all the packages that I have available, even though most of the times this won't be the case. But we just need a very rough estimate of all the rates for all the packages I might possibly use for an order. So, uh, and by the way, as far as the package class goes, this is a way for me to, you see all these methods that allow me to find the smallest or biggest package. Uh, so a package itself is going to be like, is going to be an object like this, where uh, these are all USPS priority mail free boxes that you can get. And these are all their dimensions. And I also have some other types of packages and boxes below, but I'm not going to show them. But I will show these free USPS boxes. So I have a bunch of packages like these. And so the ultimate goal is to find the cheapest package to use to ship some items from an order. So anyway, we get the heaviest package. We see if the listing was USPS priority mail or not. If it was first class, then you could also ship via priority if it makes sense to. For example, if you're combining order uh combining shipments from a single buyer into one package, then it might make more sense to have a single USPS priority mail package instead of using first class, which is limited to one pound for a small package at least. And oh, well, I say small package. I don't know. I believe all of USPS First Class is limited to one pound. I might be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, that is the case. Uh, so anyway, we got estimated rates. And so the Ship Engine API, I also made uh, a method for getting the estimated rates. And we are sending in 
the information of the buyer to the ship engine API to get an estimate for how much it would cost to send an item of the weights of the item to ship uh to the buyer from your address with the heaviest box and so now that we have all the uh now that we have mapped we have essentially mapped each type of box to a cost now we have find best packages info and so this code is going to this is where we find the best fitting box for the items of the sale so First thing we're doing is making sure that okay, we're po we're populating all the po uh, we're populating the packages list with all the possible packages that we could use for an order. And so this is where we do, uh, this is where we check, like, for example, if the, if an item in the order is greater than one pound, then we definitely can't use USPS uh, first class, things like that. And so what we're doing here is we're going through all the, uh, or, well, we're actually finding all the possible combinations of packages that could be used to ship an item where the amount of packages is up to five, as you can see here. And then we are sorting them by total cost ascending. So now that we have a list of all the possible combinations of packages, uh, we need to go up that ascending list and find the cheapest combination of packages that the items will actually fit in. So I do have the dimensions of the items in a cell. And so Packer is a class I wrote that has some functions to help determine if packages or if items fit in packages. And so this is making an assumption that an item is a cuboid. So it has a length, width, and height, like a box. And the package is also a cuboid with a length, width, and height. And so we're trying to fit the items into the package. And we can determine, uh, we try to rotate the items to find a way to make the items fit in the package. And if they don't fit, then, uh, then we failed. And so what this code is going, I'm not going to go over this code because it's, uh, the way I wrote it is kind of confusing, honestly. Uh, but as you can see here, we're flipping the, the items inside of the box and we're trying to make it fit. So...
if we do find, a, well, not if, but when we find a combination where all the items fit, then we found the cheapest co combination. And then we save that information of the cheapest of the cheapest combination and which packages we need to use. If we don't find a result, then we raise an exception. And yeah, this is also accounting for the fact that the packages themselves also have weights. So, we need to make note of that, and yeah, we have found the best combination of packages to use at this point. So, now we go back to where we called this method. We have the information about the best packages to use. This is just... logging all that information which we've obtained. And... At this point... We can use Ship Engine to create a shipment what they call a shipment. And once again, we are sending over the buyer's information, but we are also saying to Ship Engine, I would like to make a shipment with this particular box to this address. So we create a shipment. However, when you create a shipment, you are not charged until you actually order a label. So that's where get label from shipment ID comes in. And so we create a label, uh, four by six inches, for my thermal printer, and we download that shipping label as a PNG file. Now, to make things easy for me, I add the item the checkout message, the quantity, and the box to use onto the shipping label. What this means is when the print job gets sent to my thermal printer and I tear off the label, all I need to do whenever someone buys from me is look at the label and see how much of what item to put into what box and that's it. So there's no need for me to try to figure out how many of an item fits into what box and this becomes especially useful when a buyer is purchasing some strange amount of quantity of an item uh, that you're not really used to and you aren't really sure what type of box it would fit in it saves you time trying to figure that out uh, you can already know what the cheapest box is where those items fit inside uh, using this automation. So we apply the label text and we create a new PNG file with the text applied.
And after that, we send the print job for the modified label. In this case, I'm using a program called EarthenView. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but they made it very easy to print an image. Surprisingly, I was having trouble finding solutions to do that. Uh, specifically, uh, printing to the default printer. I was having trouble finding a solution to do that, so uh, this one actually worked. And you can define specifically which file you want to print. So they made it easy, but uh, there might be a better way. It's just that I, I spent a while trying, uh, trying out different solutions, and this is the one that worked, so I'm going to stick with that. We send the print job and we get the tracking number from the label. The next thing we need to do after we've created a shipping label is mark the order as shipped. And that involves adding a tracking number to the eBay transaction. So that's what we're doing here. And you can set multiple tracking numbers for an eBay transaction. For example, if someone bought a large quantity that's not going to fit in one box, then you can set multiple tracking numbers, and this allows you to do that. So, after that, we do calculation of profits, uh, the direct costs of the items, and the shipping and the package itself, because the package itself may have also had a cost. And we determine the net profit as well. Uh, we can get the final value fee and from eBay, uh, from eBay API as well. So what we're doing here is we are inserting a row to Google Spreadsheets with all this information, and I already have formulas on this Google Sheets spreadsheet to uh, take this information and uh, aggregate uh, this information from all the rows on the spreadsheet into uh, into data that's more uh, into other data such as like overall profit for the past year or uh, overall uh, overall net and gross profit, things like that. And specifically, I designed it to make it easy for me when I need to file taxes or present this information to a tax consultant. So I'm not going to show that, but uh, I already wrote the Google Spreadsheets formulas, and so all this information is uh, stored in a Google Spreadsheet as well as uh, used in other spreadsheets for other calculations. And so this is where we take all the information about the transactions and we also store it locally in a JSON file. And... That's about it. So just to recap what's all being done here, we 
go through all the unshipped orders, we find the cheapest package that the items of those orders fit in. We create labels with text applied to those labels, that, which specifies the item, the quantity, and which box to use. We mark the item as shipped and set the tracking number. And we store the information about the order to Google Sheets. And ultimately, this saves a lot of time and a lot of guessing of whether or not an item will fit in a package. Uh, what's the cheapest package to use? Uh, because if you're not using a flat rate package, then sometimes you sometimes it might make more sense to use one type of package instead of another. Or sometimes it might make more sense to use flat rate or not use flat rate based on the location of the buyer. So you don't need a guess anymore with this type of code. So I am interested in hearing any feedback or suggestions. Thanks for watching.